Spendthrift Farm Stallions. First two-year-olds on the track by Golden Sense, Cross Traffic, It's My Lucky Day, Can the Man, and Shaking It Up, including Golden Sense's stakes winner, Pickett, a dominant nine-length winner in the $75,000 DS Shine Young Futurity at Evangeline. Spendthrift, the Breeders Farm. Hi everybody, Dan Ullman along with Nicole Russo. Welcome to Spa Babies, presented by Spendthrift Farm, home of Malibu Moon, the sire of racing's newest millionaire, Farrell, winner of last week's grade three Shuvi stakes at Saratoga. Let's take a look at the field for Saturday's Whitney Day Spa Baby event. It's race number seven. We're going six furlongs on the dirt. $85,000 is the purse. We've got a Chad Brown coupled entry, the one fullness of time, the 1A ahead of plan. They are the three to one morning line favorites. Ahead of plan is the one and only also eligible in this race. Nicole, let's start off with fullness of time. This is a son of Flatter, and he's got a lot of pedigree as a half to the ill-fated Bobby Abu Dhabi, a graded stakes winning sprinter who was precocious enough to win it too. Yeah, Bobby Abu Dhabi, who unfortunately was lost a couple weeks ago uh, in, a, in a training uh, incident at Del Mar, uh, was a really fast, really precocious horse who I believe was still on the upside at the time of his death. Fullness of time is by Flatter, who has thrown some good sprinters, but also horses who can go longer. He's a really versatile stallion. Uh, obviously, as we talked about, Bobby Abu Dhabi won early, but, you know, like I said, I think he was on the upside. The Flatters certainly develop, uh, you know, throughout their careers. This one I'm kind of taking a wait and see approach on. The Flatters win 12% of the time with two year old first time starters. This dam won three races, including a 91 buyer performance sprinting on the dirt. We usually don't talk about also eligibles here on Spa Babies, but I do want to mention that if the 1A ahead of plan gets into the race, this is a son of big drama that sold for 475000 with several bullet works. You're definitely going to want to consider this source if he gets in. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, big drama, a champion sprinter, uh, did really well for himself with some of his early runners so far in Florida, which is kind of the epicenter of two-year-old sales. They really value precocity in their stallions down there. Let's move on to the number two, Justice of War, breaking from the rail for trainer Steve Asmussen, who's won three of his last five uh, starters, two-year-old first-time starters at Saratoga. Justice of War is from the first crop of Strong Mandate, and this one blitzed the furlong in 10 seconds prior to selling for $550,000 in April. What can we expect from the Strong Mandates? The Strong Mandates have been really, really well received. Uh, indicates to me that people think they're going to run early, particularly his performance as two-year-old. Um, he was a grade one winning two-year-old himself. So that's no surprise. A big, well-built son of his. Um, he had the highest priced yearling for a first crop yearling sire last year at Saratoga, which was really kind of a, a breakout sale considering, you know, he was in there against the Will Take Charges, the Cairo Princes, the Golden Sense. Um, you know, a lot of these other stallions that were kind of, you know, getting getting a little more attention. The strong mandates continued to sell well this year as two-year-olds, including this one who sold for more than half a million. The two-year-old sales people are typically looking for a return on that investment on the racetrack that season, so that that indicates a lot of faith in his early horses to me. While this dam did win sprinting with a 73 buyer top, also a winner on a wet track, which could be a factor on Saturday, to me there's a lot of turf deep in this female family. The third dam, the very classy grade one turf performer, Pharma. The fourth dam, a multiple grade one stakes winner and committed. I wonder if Justice of War will do better on turf down the road. He very well could be, but I'm glad that you brought up, you know, the wet track performance for the dam because Strong Mandate, I believe, his hopeful win at Saratoga also came on a wet track. So Justice of War, in addition to kind of some of that turf pedigree, which, as we've mentioned, sometimes crosses over to a wet track, has, has immediate parentage and performance on that type of surface. The number three, Cousin Pete, goes out for the potent trainer-jockey combination of Todd Pletcher and John Velasquez. And this is a son of Yes, It's True that sold up for $320,000 in April after breezing a furlong in 10 and 2. And this is a really intriguing family with the speed of Yes, It's True on top. The Dan, though, is a half to the grade three stakes place dirt router Testoster Stone, who could run all day long. What are we going to get from Cousin Pete first out? 
<laughs> well, I think Cousin Pete, some of it is in the training, too, and they're certainly going to have this one primed to fire first out. I do like the way that this horse has sold up, and not only sold up more than doubled his price every time, from 20000 as a weanling to 52 as a yearling to 320000 this past April. Even though the, the work was kind of what you consider a modest work in 10 and 2, it really indicates to me that this horse is just physically maturing. This is also the family of the multiple grade 1 turf runner risk averse, so there's a lot of class in this pedigree. The 4, 5, and 6, all of them have experience, and we'll begin with the number 4, Dylan Rocks. This is a son of Painter who sold for $140,000 in April after blitzing two furlongs in 21 and 2. Uh, there is some dirt in this pedigree, and this horse took some money in his career debut. Two to one for a Bar Barbara trained firster in an eight horse field. Didn't have the greatest break, was down inside, and I thought it was a learning experience. I think he galloped out well after the fact. The third dam's a multiple group one turf winner in Crimp Lean, so this horse was bet like he could run a little bit, and I wouldn't be surprised if he improved second out. Well, I'm not surprised that he was bet like he could run a little bit. If you look at it, he, he worked the quarter mile at the two-year-old sale, and that to me indicates that, you know, it's, it's a horse who's a little bit more mature, who's coming to hand a little bit quicker, um, you know, as opposed to working the traditional furlong. And maybe some of those, if savvy handicappers know how to pick them out, can win early. That being said, Painter took some time to mature himself. I've expected his foals to kind of follow in those footsteps. So I think Dylan Rocks is following, you know, kind of a very understandable progression in his maturity and that he did probably learn a lot in that first outing. Number five is Larceny, a second time starter for tra trainer Brian Lynch, adding Lasix for the first time. Larceny finished ahead of Dylan Rocks in that July 7th maiden race. This is a $40,000 yearling. Lots of class in the pedigree. The dam a half to the multiple stakes winner, Cool Wind. Both the second and third dams were graded stakes winning dirt routers. Larceny didn't break very well was sort of in between horses on the turn, had to come very wide into the stretch, and then was trying to drift in a little bit. A bit green for that debut, but I thought Larceny could learn a lot from that performance, and I wouldn't be surprised with the addition of Lasix if this horse moves forward. Larceny's a horse I'm really very intrigued by. Uh, Tale of the Cat is a nice two-year-old sire that race uh, last month at Belmont. Like you said, he was a little bit green, um, was very wide, kind of, you know, trying to get in, get out, you know, trying to figure out what this was all about. Um, I like that it was going six furlongs. I like that he has that foundation in him. And he's come out of that race and, and worked very well, it looks like, on his work tab. And I like to see that from a mental standpoint with these two-year-olds, that they come out of a race and it looks like the light goes on a little bit. Claiborne homebred Mucho is the number six, attracting Jose Ortiz for trainer Bill Madden. I like the things that this horse did in his career debut. There was a long delay before the start of the opener on June the 10th. The horse got all caught up in the gate, and Mucho just stood there like an old professional. Nothing phased him at all. Once the gate started, he got brushed a bit and steadied at the start, but then he was down towards the inside as we're going to take a look turning into the stretch. He's down in behind this one to two favorite whiskey echo but i like how he professionally changes leads eases to the outside and finishes second best the buyer speed figure only a 48 but as you know nicole these two-year-olds can improve by leaps and bounds from start to start visual a little bit more in these spots uh, ran a really nice second with that rally after a little bit of a troubled break whiskey echo came back to run well next out uh, this is a really nice flavor in a family. He's half to a grade three winner in size. And I mean, you, you look at the, the family is very interesting. Um, Mucho is actually line bred back to the female family that produced his sire, Blame. And it, Blame, Blame is, you know, turned into a really nice, actually, turf sire. And this horse, line bred back to his well champion, Nuriev, group one winner, Archipenko. A lot of turf breeding back here. I, you know, I do think Mucho's going to want a little bit longer, and he's another one where I'm kind of wondering what what surface is going to end up being his home. The number seven Moon Colony. Boy, there's a lot to like. 
with Moon Colony pedigree, connections, workouts, etc. Moon Colony is a half brother to the multiple grade one stakes winner Cavorting, who was fast enough to win her two year old debut. He is also a half to Thirst for Life, who is a grade two stakes place dirt sprinter at two. He is by Uncle Mo, who wins 18% with two year old first time starters. He sold for $400,000 as a yearling, and the dam, a grade two stakes winning router, was quick enough to win it too. So lots to like with Moon Colony going out for John Oxley and Mark Cassie. Definitely, and I very much like the combination that you're seeing in the pedigree because Cavorting and Thirst for Life, who we've discussed, they were precocious enough to win at two, even though they were both from the AP Indy Sire line, which you think of as developing a little bit later, and yet, yet they could still win early. Now this one, Moon Colony, is by Uncle Mo, who can definitely sire a powerhouse two-year-old. So I'm wondering just how much precocity Moon Colony has because he's certainly bred for it. Calumet Farm owns the number eight stock chain going out for the legend, D. Wayne Lucas. Stock chain, a $75,000 weanling purchase by exchange rate out of a Dyna former mare. And when I see this pedigree, and there's a lot of class deep in the female family, I wonder if this colt will do better with a little experience and maybe a switch to the turf. You know, that was my first thought as well. Uh, exchange rate is a terrific and versatile two-year-old sire. He's had some nice horses win on everything. This one, stock chain, shows some nice work. But I do see that Dynaformer mare underneath and think more about turf. Let's move on to a formulator fact. Lucas is one of the best of all time, but recently at Saratoga, he struggled with his two-year-old first-time starters in maiden special weight dirt sprints, zero for 28, zero in the money. Maybe stock chain will need a race. We move from Calumet Farm to a fifth stable homebred. The number nine fabulous fun is by the very talented stallion, Distorted Humor. This is a half-brother to a stakes place dirt sprinter named Barrier Island, who is a winner at two, the damn one twice at two and was a multiple grade two stakes winning dirt router. The second dam was four time graded stakes winner Country Hideaway. This is the female family of Sky Beauty and Breeders' Cup Distaff winner Pleasant Home. Really the only question for me is, is six furlongs too short? <laughs> that's, that's kind of the question with me as, as well. Uh, you mentioned Barrier Island, who was a pretty quick horse who won it too. But really, so many long-winded horses deep in the family, as you would expect from, from a terrific fifth family. Uh, you see champion Sky Beauty, Breeders' Cup Distaff winner, Pleasant Home, Grade 1 winner's Point of Entry in Pine Island. And that's just under the first three generations. Uh, nothing but class, and so, sort of nothing but long-winded class back there. The number 10 is Sneeds going out for Nick Zito. Sneeds, a $90,000 yearling buy, is by Street Sense, who wins with 11% of two-year-old first-time starters. The, this is the first foal out of a stakes place dam who did win sprinting, and the second dam had a little bit of speed as well. Uh, Sneeds, I think, might have caught a tough spot for his debut on Whitney Day. I sort of think so as well. I will say that the, the thing that Sneeds has going for him is that Sneeds has become a very good wet track sire. He's got horses, Abby K, he loved this block. Uh, Sneeds, if it does come up wet, as is perhaps expected on Saturday, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, that's that, that could be a factor in his favor. Let's uh, take a look at a formulator fact for Zito. It's the exact same one as Mr. Lucas. Great trainers that sometimes like to give their horses a race or two before they achieve their best. Zero for 28, none in the money over the past five years with two-year-old debuters sprinting on the dirt in Saratoga Maiden Special Weights. Okay, pick time for the Whitney Day Maiden. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the winner of this race comes right back in the hopeful later in the meet or if we see him in the Champagne during the Belmont Fall Championship meeting. Where are you going? You know, I think Moon Colony just has the pedigree profile of a horse who's ready to win early, and uh, Kathy seems to have some nice foundation in him with the series of works he shows. I do think Larceny is going to move forward off that debut and is, is going to offer some really nice value here. And I think you have to have the Pletcher horse Cousin P in your mix 
somewhere. I think if the 1A ahead of plan somehow gets into this race, I'm going to be using him, a son of big drama going out for Chad Brown, who sold for a pretty penny. If not, I think Mucho is going to improve second out for Bill Mott, who usually doesn't win first time out. And while this Colts buyer needs a bit of a boost, I like the way he's been working at Saratoga leading up to this race. And he just looked like an old pro in his career debut. I'm going to go 1A if he runs, 6, 5, and 4 in Saturday's Spa Babies, presented by Spendthrift Farm.